بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So we begin with the adhan. So khushu doesn't start with when you start praying. Actually, it starts before that. We already mentioned the things we have to do. Now we're going to start with the adhan. Now the adhan. Let's first go through what the muadhan says. He says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He makes this call four times. He says a statement, Allahu Akbar. Now, what does Allahu Akbar mean? Anyone, anyone want to share? Allah is greater, greatest. Anything else? Allah is greater, Allah is greatest. Which one is it? It's a common debate. What do people say? Is it Allahu Akbar? Is Allah is greater or Allah is greatest? Actually, it's Allah is greater. Allah is greater. It's some tafdeel. Just like you say, I am better than someone, I am worse than someone. For example, if you were to say, I am better than my friend in basketball. Usually when you say better or greater or something, you, you say in what? I am worse in my, than my friend in handwriting. I am better than my friend in... In whatever, soccer, whatever it is, you, you say something. What's interesting about this call, Allahu Akbar, there's nothing left. It's Allah is greater, blank. There's nothing there. So why is it that the, the call to prayer starts Allahu Akbar Allah, four times? Allah is greater, blank. What's beautiful about that, brothers and sisters, is that it's a call to come to Allah. And no matter what anyone is doing, let's say there's a sister who's, who's at home and she's, Watching TV. There's a brother who's playing basketball outside. There's a sister who's in class. There's a brother who's, at, you know, um, mowing his lawn. There's people are doing every different thing. Then they hear the call, Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than whatever you are doing. You fill in the blank. So that means what? Now when you're at home, and now if you, now we're not in a Muslim country where we hear the adhan outside, but let's say you have an alarm clock, you know the adhan clocks are on your cell phone, you have the adhan go off or on your laptop, you have the adhan go off. When you hear Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, you are hearing a reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is greater than anything and everything that you are doing. Put it aside, it's now time for salah. It's a reminder. And so subhanAllah, the one who doesn't answer this call, in essence what he is saying by action is that what I am doing is greater than Allah. And that's scary. Something you're doing is greater or more important than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Mu'adhan says four times, Allah is greater. To remind you, whatever you're doing, leave it off. Now it's time for salah. Now it's time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this, you know, you might be, somebody might be thinking, why should I answer this call? This is a call for prayer. Why should I answer it? This is why. Because we believe that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore we sub, when we say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah we have submitted ourselves fully to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever Allah wants from us, we do. So, and it teaches us sincerity. So somebody might pray, but they're, they're praying because they want to impress somebody. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a story of this young brother. He comes into the masjid and mashallah, he moves to this community. And he's praying salah in the masjid, long prayers. He looks like he has khushu. Every prayer in the masjid, he's there. So the brothers are like, MashaAllah, you know, it's, you know, uh, you're, you're the man, man, MashaAllah. I've never seen somebody pray like you. So the brother was single, actually, and he, was trying, he wanted to get married. So he's praying, so there's one particular uncle, he's hoping to marry his daughter. So especially with uncles, when he sees uncle there, he's like, okay, I gotta make sure, you know, like, I gotta pray a long prayer. I gotta pretend like I'm crying. And so he's praying these awesome prayers. So the uncle, the one he wants. He comes to him and he tells him, MashaAllah, what's your name, brother? It seems like you're new in the community. What's your name? He says, my name is Abdullah. He says, MashaAllah, I see that you're, you're, you're praying, MashaAllah, you're praying very good. He says, yeah, and you know, I'm also fasting today too. He's trying to impress him. But Allah said, when you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, it's a reminder you pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No showing off, no riyah, nothing, you're praying for Allah. Then, Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu is a messenger of Allah. Now these two statements are what we hope to be able to say at our death. This is what we live on, this is what we hope to die on. Now what's interesting is Bilal ibn Rabah, he was the mu'adhan of the Prophet and he 
When he would make adhan, he would actually, when he would call the call to prayer, he would actually look to where the Prophet ﷺ was sitting. He would look to where the Prophet ﷺ was sitting. When he would say, Ashadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah, he would look at where the Prophet ﷺ was, and if he wasn't there, he would look to where he would expect him to be. So when the Prophet ﷺ died, Bilal ibn Rabah tried to make the adhan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah When he got to the statement Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah He looked to where the Prophet ﷺ used to sit And when he didn't see the Prophet there He was crying and crying and crying Until the point he went to Abu Bakr The first Khalifa after the Prophet He said, oh Abu Bakr Excuse me from calling the adhan. I can't physically, I can't do it anymore. Because I, when I say, I bear witness that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, I remember the Prophet was amongst us, and I just cry and cry. So Abu Bakr excused him. And he said, let me go to jihad fi sabirullah. So he went to fight, and he went into Bilad al-Sham and Iraq, in that area where the, where the battles were happening. He was fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until years later, they went to Bilal. They said, oh Bilal, can you call for us to adhan one more time? Let us hear the adhan again from you, the mu'adhan of the Prophet wasallam." And so Bilal agrees. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The, the people hear the voice of Bilal. The, everybody's like, the door is open, the window is open. Everybody's like, Ya Allah, this is the mu'adhan of the Prophet. Ashhadu an la ilaha And the people come out into the streets. Bilal ibn Rabah. And when they hear the voice of Bilal, what does it remind them of? It reminds them of the Messenger of Allah. Then he tries to say, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when they hear the Bilal, when he makes this call, he looks just like how he used to look to the side again. To look to where the Prophet ﷺ used to be. And he didn't see the Prophet. And he began crying and crying. And everybody remembering the Prophet ﷺ, all, there was no dry eye. This is the adhan we hear every day. Reminding us of our purpose in life. Reminding us who we worship and who we follow to worship Allah. But do we ever feel something when we hear this call to prayer? Or is it just another, just background noise? You know, Adhan was a gift for the Ummah, just like Salah was a gift. The companions, they didn't know how should we call people to prayer. The Christians and the other religions, they would use this bell. You know, they hear the, 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 the church bells. Dun, dun, they would, the church bells go off. So they're wondering, how do we call people to the masjid for prayer? So Allah caused two different sahabi to have the same dream of the adhan. A revelation as a gift for the ummah, this call to prayer. Uh, this is what Prophet he would say, Arihna biha ya Bilal. O oh Bilal, give the call to prayer, bring our souls comfort. Then the mu'adhan says, Hayya ala salah, come to prayer, come to prayer. Now this is the only part of the adhan that we don't repeat after the mu'adhan. We say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. And what's amazing is this. When the mu'adhan says, حيا على الصلاة, come to prayer. حيا على الفلاح, come to success. We say there is no might or power except with Allah. But the word حول, what we're translating as might, actually means the ability to change from one state to another. من حال إلى حال. So the mu'adhan says, come to prayer, and we say, there is no ability to, for us to change our state that we are in. Maybe you're washing the dishes, maybe you're watching TV, maybe you're playing video games, maybe you're at school, maybe you're at work, but now we need to leave that and answer the call and pray to Allah. 
We don't have the ability, ability to do so except with the help of Allah. Just like we say in Surah Al-Fatiha, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ It is only you we worship. وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ It is only you we seek help from to worship you. Perfect symmetry. Come to prayer, come to success. Then the Mu'addin again says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater. Remind you again, whatever you're doing, leave it off, come to the prayer. La ilaha illallah. He ends the adhan with the, with the testimony of faith. There is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A call that's being called to, for you to come to pray to the one you love the most. The one we just talked about. Ar-Rahman, Al-Ghaffar, Al-Ghafoor, Al-Sattar, Al-Tawwab, Al-Haleem. The one who has given us everything we have. Come worship Him. And you know what's amazing, brothers and sisters, is that... Actually, before I get into that, I want to show you this video. And I don't, I'm hoping that, that you, can see, you can see it. If not, the, the audio is what's really important. Watch this video. As sunset approaches, Sami wants me to experience Jeddah's unique call to prayer. From every direction. 36 mosques in one square kilometer. And oh, it's, it's been calling for 1400 years. Oh, that's beautiful. And it is the same word from the time of the Prophet. And look, people oh, closing look their this. shops, and everybody's going to pray. Just magical. <laughs> it's such an incredible sight and sound that I find myself completely overcome. And soon they will be reading Quran and maybe one of them will be reading the story of Jesus and Mary because it's in the Quran and Moses. Look at the shop they're closing. To go to play. I feel quite moved. It is a nice experience. That's the power of Adhan. This is this is what a non-Muslim hearing the Adhan, what she feels. What about the one who knows Allah? What about us? How should we feel when we hear the call to, to come worship the one who who, who, you, who created you and who you love and who loves you. And yani we're hearing this call, Allahu Akbar, Rasulullah, it's beautiful. But we don't experience the adhan. SubhanAllah, I have heard adhan by voice, but if you just go by voice, you would say, brother, please don't call the adhan again. He didn't have a good voice at all. But SubhanAllah, when he says, La ilaha illallah, Wallahi, I've, I've experienced this, chills go down my back. I've seen the same brother cry when he calls the adhan. Cry when he calls the iqamah. Because he feels it. But we have the same blessing that, subhanAllah, we have every single day we experience. And what's amazing is that almost every moment of the day, because of the, the time zones, there is a minaret somewhere, a mu'adhan somewhere, who is making this call, Allahu Akbar, Allahu, the call to prayer. Across the world, the same call. Like he said, the same call from the time of the Prophet ﷺ to this day. Masajid across the world, from Taiwan to Jamaica to America to Mecca, everywhere. The same call to prayer. It's beautiful. That's why the Prophet ﷺ would say, Ya Bilal, aqim is salah, arihna biha. Oh Bilal, call the iqamah. Bring our, our souls comfort by the by the call to prayer. Now, what's amazing, brothers and sisters, is the Prophet ﷺ, he said in a hadith, in Bukhari, that, مَنْ قَالَ حِينَ يَسْمَعُ النِّدَاءِ اللَّهُمَّ رَبَّ هَذِهِ الدَّعْوَةِ التَّامَّةِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْقَائِمَةِ آتِ مُحَمَّدٍ الْوَسِيلَةَ وَالْفَضِيلَةِ وَبْعَثُ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا الَّذِي وَعَدْتَهِ 
He says, حَلَّتْ لَهُ شَفَاعَتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ So when the adhan is called, if you make this dua, and it's in the handout, if you make this dua, O oh Allah, He says, O oh Allah, Lord of this perfect call, and of the regular prayer which is going to be established, give Muhammad Sallallahu the right of intercession, and illustriousness, and resurrect him to the best and highest place in paradise that you promised him of. The Prophet said, whoever says this dua, he will be granted my intercession on the Day of Judgment. This is the blessing of Adhan. So when you hear the Adhan, you say this dua, you will be amongst those who the Prophet will intercede on your behalf. What a blessing. Not only that, the Prophet ﷺ, he says that الدُّعَاء لَا يُرَدْ بَيْنَ الْأَذَانِ وَالْإِقَامَةِ that dua, when you call, you supplicate to Allah between the time of adhan and iqamah, this dua will not be turned away. So you're sitting in the masjid when the adhan goes off at 1.30, 1.35. You hear this call to prayer, you make this dua, you qualify to be interceded on beha- by the Prophet on your behalf on the day of judgment, on a day when we will all be longing for intercession. For someone to, 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 to speak to Allah on our behalf. Not only that, after the adhan, now you're like, okay, I want to make dua. Because Allah is going to answer my dua. So you sit down in the masjid, you don't check Facebook or ESPN, rather you're sitting in front of Allah, and you're making, Ya Allah, forgive me my sins. Oh Allah, give me tawfiq to answer this call to prayer every single time it's called, so I can die as a Muslim and meet you as a Muslim. This is a dua you make. Whatever, maybe somebody has boards or, or exams or wants to get married or, or, or there's, their mother is sick or their child is sick, this is a time when dua is answered. So call on Allah. And Allah answers the call. And now for the mu'adhin himself, what about the one who calls the adhan? Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he goes to his father and he says, Oh my father, I see that you love spending time in the desert and being with the cattle and whatnot. So he says, so he says, he says, so he says, when you are in the desert, he says, When you are with in the desert with the cattle, then raise your voice for the adhan, because he says, He says that nothing will hear. He says, when you're, when you're alone outside, raise your voice when you make the adhan. Because no jinn, no human, or nothing, not even the pebbles, the stones, the soil, the grains of sand, everything that hears your voice will come on the day of judgment and testify, O oh Allah, this slave of Allah has called the call to prayer. Subhanallah. I remember there was once a brother making adhan in the masjid, and it was in America, so the adhan doesn't go outside. And so this brother, a friend of his, went and he opened the door to the exit of the masjid. The door to leave the masjid, he opened the door. So he said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm trying to increase the amount of things that will witness for my friend on the Day of Judgment. His friend doesn't know he's doing that, but out of love for his brother, he wishes for the brother what he wishes for himself, he opens the door so more, more things will testify on behalf of this person on the Day of Judgment. Now the Sahaba went to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, it's no fair. The the the, the, call, the you know, they're taking all the reward. There's only one mu'adhan per masjid, right? So there's a lot of people here. Only one of us will make the call to adhan. So he's like, so he's, he's they're taking all the ajr. Because the Sahaba, they they look and be like, man, okay, who's getting ahead of me in ajr? Their their competition is a competition for akhirah. So it's no fair, Ya Rasulullah. They're taking all the reward. So Rasulullah the told them when the mu'adhan makes the call, repeat after him. So when he says, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, you say, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Except for, as we mentioned, Hayat Asma'i Han Falah, you say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Then the Prophet said, after you do this, send to Allah. Ask Allah whatever you want, you will be given it. So the scholars, they say, okay, so does that mean the, the one who repeats after the Mu'adhan, does he get the reward of the Mu'adhan? Will everything testify on his behalf as well? They say, from what the, as a period the hadith, it doesn't seem like that is the case. No. Things will just come on his behalf. But, the man said that Muhammad is taking all the rewards. The Prophet said, do what he does. So you have a learned reward, Allah Ala, what it is. But not only that, the Prophet told him, make dua, and it will be answered. 
So, brothers and sisters, when we make that, when we hear the adhan, when we have the muazzin, we make the dua so we can qualify for the intercession of the Prophet, and then we also we also make dua afterwards for which dua is answered. Now, from here on out, inshallah ta'ala, you're going to be amazed about what every aspect of salah is and what it means and the rewards of it if we do things properly. So inshallah ta'ala, the only, what's unfortunate is that I was hoping to get through at least more content so that way when we pray the we'll get to practice some of the things we learn. But what we'll do at least is we'll practice about the adhan. So the adhan, and you'll find a lot of masajid, what happens is the mu'adhan calls the call to prayer and everybody's still talking, nobody listens, everybody's kind of still on their phones and doing whatever. But the Aisha says about the Prophet that when he's with us at home, he would talk to us and we would talk to him. But he says, when the call to prayer was given, It was as if he didn't know anyone. When the call to prayer is given, he has to be focused on getting ready for salah. So when we call the call to, when the adhan is made for salah, to get in the, to have khushu in prayer, we do the things we mentioned, but also, let this be a time now between this until the prayer is called for iqamah. We focus on Allah, we sit in the masjid, we focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we try and remember um, some things and we'll talk about more what we can do inshallah ta'ala.